so we know abortion hurts women. We know abortion hurts men. We've heard a lot today about the emotional and psychological harm that is done. Let's go a little deeper and talk further about the physical complications and the problems that are caused for future pregnancies. And we have an outstanding uh, doctor who's going to be presenting this section, Dr. Frieda McKissick-Bush. She practices obstetrics and gynecology in Jackson, Mississippi, and is a clinical instructor in the Department of Obstetrics, excuse me, Obstetrics and Gynecology and Department of Family Medicine at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. She is a fellow in the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology and a board member of the American Association of Pro-Life OBGYNs. Dr. Bush is also CEO and President of the Medical Institute for Sexual Health and co-authored with Dr. Joe McElhaney two books, Girls Uncovered, New Research on What America's sexual cultural does to young women and hooked new science on how casual sex is affecting our children dr bush will share with us the impact of abortion on women's health and also on preterm births dr bush to answer that question <laughs> sorry about that to answer that question, we're going to look at three key indicators of the health of a nation according to the World Health Organization. And they are infant mortality, premature birth rate, and maternal mortality. Since abortion was legalized in America, there has actually been a worsening of those key indicators. But that information has been silenced in the conscious drumbeat of myths, half truths, and lies. And it has been designed to desensitize Americans to the reality that women's health has not improved, but has actually worsened. So here are three of the myths that I'm going to share with you that will help us to show why they are hiding them. Myth one, women who choose abortion now will be able to have another child without any problems. Fact, induced abortion increases the risk and increases the risk of her having the child prematurely with the next pregnancy. And giving birth prematurely is the leading cause of infant death in the United States. Before 1970, the prematurity rate was 6%, but that rate has doubled and in 2006, it was 12.8. This is per 1,000 live births. Now, a lot of effort has gone into the medical community to try to decrease the premature weight. As a matter of fact, in 2003, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, the March of Dimes, and others sponsored a campaign to identify the cause and to address the causes. In 2006, the Institute of Medicine even published a resource book called Preterm Birth, Causes, Consequences, and Prevention. Now there's an interesting comment that was made in the book, and I quote, African American women deliver their babies before 32 weeks of gestation three times as often as white women, unquote. So when the researchers looked for causes of this disparity, they concluded, quote, Disparities in the rate of preterm birth between African American and white women persist after attempts to adjust for socioeconomic differences. Smoking, which had been associated with preterm birth, is less in the African American pregnant population, and their rate of the use of drugs and alcohol is no different than white women. So what is the difference between African American and white women? Let's examine the abortion rate. African-American women obtained African-American women obtained 32 percent of all abortions in the United States, although they are only 13 percent of the population. Tragically, in my state, Mississippi, African-Americans are 37 percent of the population, 
and we obtain 78% of the abortions. Mississippi is also among the top states with the highest premature birth and infant mortality rates. And according to the 2011 statistics from the Mississippi Department of Health, the premature birth rate in Mississippi is 16.5 per 1,000 live births. For white women, it's 13.5, non-white, 20.1. And the infant mortality rate, 9.4 overall, 6.5 for white, non-white, 12.8, which is the highest ratio in the United States. Now, how do we know that abortion leads to premature births? There are over 130 studies in the medical literature showing that abortion leads to an increase in premature births. These preemie babies are more at risk for cerebral palsy, developmental problems, and mental impairments. One study of more than 300,000 women found that for every 1,000 women who did not have an abortion, three will have a baby under 28 weeks. But this rises to four with just one abortion. It rises to six for women who've had two and 11 for women who've had three. So the fact is abortion has worsened premature births and infant mortality in the United States. Myth two, abortion is safer than childbirth. You've heard it. But the fact is, there is no accurate measure of maternal deaths from abortion, but there are greater accuracy for deaths after live births. Fact two, women who abort are more likely to die within a year after an abortion. And fact three, the maternal mortality rate in the United States has doubled over the last 20 years since abortion has been legal. Now I can tell you, the maternal mortality rate is a measure of deaths in pregnant women or women who have just delivered per 100,000 live births. So this MMR includes women who have had live births, stillbirths, and any other pregnancy outcome, including abortion. So it makes sense that if abortion were truly critical for the woman's well-being, then one would expect the maternal mortality rate to decrease with increased availability of abortion and to increase when abortion is restricted. But that's not what we find. In 1987, the MMR was 9.1. In the last report, it was 15.1, with African Americans leading the rate at 34.8. So there is a racial disparity. As a matter of fact, Amnesty International published a report in 2010 titled Deadly Delivery, the Maternal Health Care Crisis in the United States, noting the lifetime risk of maternal deaths is greater in the United States than 40 other countries, including virtually all industrialized countries. In fact, the MMR in the United States, where one out of every three pregnancies end in abortion, is greater than the maternal mortality rate in the country of Chile, where human beings are protected after fertilization and abortion is illegal. Recent studies looking at abortion-related deaths contradict the mantra that abortion is safer than childbirth. The first record linkage study of maternal deaths associated with abortion was published using Denmark's centralized health data, which found higher death rates associated with abortion than childbirth. Similar studies in California also found the same. Especially concerning is the fact that maternal mortality in the United States has been significantly increasing since 2000, with the approval of the abortion pill RU486 called Mifprix. Within a year of approval, a previously healthy 18-year-old died a week after her abortion. Since then, there have been 14 women who have died using the drug, 
There have been over 2,200 adverse events requiring over 600 hospitalizations for complications, including hemorrhaging requiring blood transfusion, infection, and ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Myth three, abortion is about women's health. Fact, abortion is about degradation of women, devaluing of human life. In no other medical procedure can we find these factors and consider them health care. There is no disease that can be cured by abortion. Babies and pregnancies are not diseases and whether the child is wanted, planned, or not. And even the commonly advocated morning after pill plan B still puts women at risk for blood clots, strokes, and deaths. The truth is, abortion is a significant risk to a woman's health, including death. Tanya Reeves, 24-year-old, died in July following a late-term abortion in a Planned Parenthood facility in Chicago. They delayed seeking help for five hours, and when they did seek help, they wasted precious time calling, an calling for the fire department, and then later an ambulance. There was no medical history that accompanied her, and so more time was lost in the ER with the doctors trying to figure out how to proceed. Tanya later died in surgery trying to repair a ruptured uterus. As society, we don't talk about the risk of incomplete abortions, but women don't understand even hysterectomy is for real. In conclusion, abortion destroys life, that of the unborn child, and more often than we think about, that of the woman, too. Abortion increases a mother's risk for the adverse events that I've mentioned, and it subjects women to sometimes practitioners that they've never even met before the procedure begins. And it strips them of their ability even for malpractice because they don't require them to have malpractice insurance of a million dollars like I have to have in practice. After 40 years of legalized abortion in America, it is still neither safe nor rare, as we've discussed. Promoting abortion on demand without limits is about creating rights that benefit the abortion providers and their profit margins rather than women's rights. It's not about protecting women's health as much as it is about population control. Though she may physically survive the abortion, a woman is never the same after an abortion. Thank you.